Welcome to a Reddit reader. What was your biggest sh no going back now moment? This one is quite literally a not going back moment. As a boy scout at summer camp, we would always take large group hikes on the last day of camp. This particular camp in West Texas was located in the middle of a deep canyon and cut through with a small stream. The day before our hike day, it rained a bit, but not too much to make us worry. It was drizzling in the morning when we got up, but we were Boy Scouts, so that obviously didn't stop us. So our long hike had us cross the small stream, up the canyon maybe 10 to 15 times, no problem, and everything went great. After a while, we get to a medium-sized pond that we all decided to go swimming in. That was fun, and we all had a blast. We get out and dressed, and we keep going farther up a hill to continue our hike. We get to the top and we hear this wonderfully ominous rushing noise. We look over a ledge and see that the water in the stream was moving a bit faster than we remembered. A friend and I volunteer to go back and see what's happened. A flash flood had ripped through the area we had just left moments before. The water in the pond was at least seven feet higher than it was five minutes before, and it was covered in foam and rapidly overflowing. We decided as a group to test our luck and go back to see if we could get out. But the last stream crossing had turned into a very fast-moving river crossing. Needless to say, we were f We literally couldn't go back, and we had to wait a long time to get help and now get to the almost flooded camp. Happened to a friend of mine in Philmont. He went to the bathroom and had to cross a small stream to get there. The sky opened up for a few minutes, and he still hadn't come back. We heard yelling a little later, and he was stuck because that small stream had quadrupled in size and was now a raging river. Stepping off that sandbar, I could barely reach to swim out to the girl caught in a riptide, and not knowing how a riptide worked. It took what felt like hours, but spoiler alert, we made it. Too early in the season for lifeguards. I remember calling out to people walking their dogs on the beach, but we were so far out they didn't even look towards us. I'm sure she is eternally grateful that you took that step. Don't know. She was a friend of a friend and I barely knew her. I was trapped in a riptide as a young child. A stranger pulled me out and almost 30 years later, I still remember his face and how emotional it was. Trust me, she remembers you. When I was a kid, maybe like 7 or 8, I got pulled out by a riptide. None of my family saw it happen until I was way out there. Some random teenager swam out to haul me back. Never got her name, but I'll gratefully remember her face forever. I'd bet the girl you hauled in feels the same sort of gratitude. I hopped a freight train once, and the moment it hits 15 to 20 miles per hour, you're just along for the ride. But the real no-going-back moment came when the train stopped on a siding outside Winnemucca. After waiting there for like five hours, I decided to walk into town and get some ice cream sandwiches. As soon as I got 50 yards from the train, I realized if it starts rolling now, I'll be too far away to chase it down. I'll just be stuck in this town for a while. Edit. For you kids out there, riding freight trains is dangerous and illegal and dirty and loud and unreliable. Don't do it. Also, I should point out that Winnemucca is home to some of America's best Basque restaurants, fantastic cowboy heritage sites, and it's the gateway to the Black Rock Desert. It's got something for everyone, not just stranded hobos. TBF. This is how 90% of Winnemucans ended up there. When I was about to get on the plane in my first semester of med school, my dad, never one for sentiment, said, Well, you're now actually worth more dead than alive. Don't screw this up. Why were you worth more dead? Insurance? I am done with school and worth approximately negative $460,000. If I die, my value goes up to zero, which is a clutch business move. LOL. While motorcycling through Vietnam, it was getting late, and I was running low on fuel. Too low to turn back to the previous town. If that wasn't bad enough, my bike rack broke. Luckily, a kind man and his daughter stopped to help. He knew no English outside of, I can fix, so I followed him. I wore my bags and held the rest of my lap. Entering the town, my jaw dropped. It was complete calamity. The streets were filled with people carrying two-by-fours, rocks, and bottles. Literally, hundreds of people. It was like a war zone, with people smashing scooters and cars on fire, people yelling and fighting. A few individuals were running for their lives with mobs in tail. 
I can still vividly see one man's face as he looked over his shoulder in dread. There were too many people to drive through, so I had to slow down to a crawl. All I kept thinking was, please don't notice me. Please don't rob me and smash my face in. Please know I'm with this kind man and his daughter. The moment lengthened as a few of the town folk started to notice me. I was scared shitless, but produced a warm smile. The smile wasn't returned. The kind man looked back and those who were taking interest in me noticed. Can't help, but think it helped. We finally breached the throng of people and pulled down an alleyway to his place. I still didn't feel safe, but I needed gas and my rack fixed. I tried to ask the man why all these people were fighting one another. He just smiled and made the drink gesture. It was during Tet, or the Vietnamese New Year. He fixed my rack, gave me some gas, and wouldn't take any money as payment. However, like Christmas, the kids received money, so I gave his daughter a fat wad of cash with his blessing. About 45 minutes later, I arrived safely at my hostel in Nirvana. Parachute jump. My life is now no longer in my hands. Oh well. Geronimo. First time I went skydiving was a tandem jump, and the guy told me on the ground, once we get in the door, we'll rock back and forth three times. On the third time forward, just roll out the door. So me, being the trusting sort, thought that was a solid plan. We get up to altitude, open the door, I put my feet on the little platform and crossed my arms just like he told me to. The f*** rocked back once and pushed us out the door immediately. My only thought was, that wasn't three. Oh f***, we're falling. Don't forget to like this video if you liked it, dislike if you disliked it, and subscribe so you don't miss our next upload.